Welcome to Old Guy Tech, the OGT.TV recording studio. Technology for the rest of us. 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 Hi, I'm Rob Charney with Old Guy Tech TV, and we're here today on our Friday Roundtable with James Stevenson, Jonathan Charney. Hello. And normally what we do on these Fridays is we Yo. just kind of sit around and goof around a little bit and talk about some of the stuff that we have seen on the internet. And um, we've got some stuff. Maybe it's interesting, maybe it's not, but uh, we'll let you be the judge of that. We'll start with uh, James. Well, I've got two stories. Okay, we'll do one and then we'll go to John. Okay. Oh, yeah. So we'll start with the entertaining one, even though they're both quite entertaining. In Maryland, man caught stealing during shop with a cop. Shop with a cop. Okay. A twenty-two-year-old man tried to steal a video game, steal video game merchandise as fifty cops roamed a Walmart. <laughs> now, my question is, whose idea was it really to have cops go to Walmart to shop? Now, the Oh, I could see the publicity for the it. The publicity for it is a uh, it's shop with a cop, the national event in which officers help needy children shop for holiday gifts. That's cool. It is cool. Yeah, but this genius, really, yeah, really genius guy, uh, Timothy Randall Clark, uh, twenty two, was found carrying video game merchandise worth six hundred and thirty five dollars out of the Walmart. Was it just games? Well, uh, according to the police report, Waldor, uh, Waldorf cops were shopping with kids when loss prevention officers saw a man opening boxes and taking items from one of the store's back rooms. So he walked into a back room with 50 cops <laughs> going around. How do you make it to a back room without seeing a cop? That's like holding up a donut. <laughs> my, my, it's, like, it's like holding up a donut shop. Yeah, well, exactly. My question, why didn't he go out the back door? Maybe it was locked. <laughs> from the inside <laughs> i don't know listen obviously this guy was not the brightest bulb in the pack because... oh, come on he was mit level right there oh yeah yeah <laughs> I, I'm just really the one day you decide to rob a walmart you go on the day when there's 50 cops yeah walk in the store yeah <laughs> then rick doesn't really make a whole lot of sense does it no no, no it doesn't no, no no sense on that one so dumb shopping guy what do you got? Well, mine's not mine's not as funny. It's more irritating. There's uh, here in the U.S. There's the the IP Protect Act, and there's SOPA trying to censor the internet. Right. And one of the geniuses at the movie uh, movie motion picture movie associations, the MPAA, whatever that stands for, Movie Picture Association of America. And this is one of his quotes. Um, he was talking about they they really force censoring the U.S. internet to stop pirate you know pirating. And here's was one of the comments was when the Chinese told Google they couldn't ha they they had to block sites or they couldn't country they managed to figure out how to block sites. Um, this, this guy's whole opinion is the what? Yeah, he <laughs> says when the Chinese told Google that they had to block sites or they couldn't do business in their country, they managed to figure out how to block sites. Or um, basically, it's, it's about this guy's really for. I mean, this is just one of many quotes of. You know, hey, we like China's great firewall of China. Right. And so what he's been doing the whole time is he's been going around saying, we need to censor the Internet. We need to censor the Internet. We need to censor. I mean, that's literally, I mean, they've been pounding the drum about so, yeah. that. He's, this is a representative of the MPA. Yeah. Well, I understand why they want to do that. I understand it. I don't. It's just stupid. <laughs> I understand it because that's their money. That's how they make. That's how they make their living. Is people going out and buying their movies, going to the theater to see their movies, rather than somebody going on the internet and just watching it that way. Well, they've actually found that pirating actually creates more money because most people, most people will see a movie or download music like I used to. I would download a couple of bands and say, "Oh, I like this." And then go out and buy it. And go yes, out and buy I it. And they, they found that most people do that, and the people who don't wouldn't have bought their product in the first place or wouldn't have seen exactly. Smurfs for three dozen times on their laptop. Yeah, but I, I, I refuse to watch Smurfs at all. Well, yeah, I was going to say, you know, so that's what it's about. Most people wouldn't, most people who pirate, you know, who, who wouldn't, wouldn't buy the product, 
wouldn't be spending money. So they're not really losing money to begin with. Yeah. You know, um, I they're, think they're gaining I, a potential. That's possible of gaining a potential customer. Yeah, I believe that, and I think that uh, the genius of iTunes is allowing people to buy individual songs because. Uh, well, you can't. There are some songs that you can't buy individually, which really pisses me off. So how do how do they figure that out? Which songs that you? Can yeah, is, is it? I don't it, really is know. Is it the like, artist that's doing it? It is the, probably is. Do, it probably is the artist licensed on it, saying, "Well, you have to buy the whole album to get that specific song." Uh, I'm yeah. sorry. Repeat it. What would you? Well, I, question. iTunes lets you download individual songs, which is really fantastic. I agree with you on that. Right. But I was just complaining that there are specific songs that you have to buy the album to get. See, my guess is that's the label more than the more than the artist. My guess is that's the label saying, "Hey, this is our guy. You're going to do this." Because I, yeah. I I doubt the artist because the artists just want their stuff out there. They make their money by touring, right? So I don't see why an artist or a musician would say, "No, I want you to buy the whole album." I don't see why they would do that. I don't know because that would be shooting themselves in the foot. That would be pulling a Metallica. Well, yeah, it, actually, it, it, I can get most of Metallica song individually. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it, it is too bad, but I think that's the genius of being able to download just yeah, the song agree. you want, and I and I think the artist actually makes more money by having that available. I think uh, I well, think the these record, record labels that make you buy the whole album, all they're trying to do is push a bad song. Yeah. in my opinion, because it's it's very difficult to have, you know, ten, twelve songs. I believe is the average per album. And they have all the songs be a hit. It's almost impossible. Exactly. So w what they're doing is they're saying, hey, you know, we want that song out there, even if it isn't a hit. Yeah. You know, we want that song out there. So, okay, so that that's the record label's The problem. only thing is, I, I don't think, I mean, was it that I heard the artists when they are doing CDs only made a buck or two off a couple of thousand, you know, off of CDs anyways. Like, they, they are, the, the, the artists don't make almost, they make almost no money off of CD sales. They make all their money by touring and the stuff they sell in concerts. That's where all their money comes from. I don't know. I'm not off, a, off, from I'm what I've heard, <laughs> from what I've heard, they get a percentage of ticket sales. They get percentage off all the merchandise they sell. I've heard, you know, that the artists don't make a whole lot on CDs. So I'm assuming it's the same way with. Well, that's I what think, I've heard. I think they. It's how the contract is written, and I think what happens is is that uh, sometimes the artist decides to take a percentage of the sales. Sometimes they don't. So it really depends on uh, the artist and the label and how they want to handle that. Um, you're right, I think they make a lot of their money uh, by touring and selling products and all that, but I think uh, with iTunes, um, I think there's another opportunity for the artist as well as the label to make money. Uh, yeah. I know, however, off of reading and hearing is they make no money off of streaming, like Pandora and all that. Yeah. Oh, was there's an infographic? Well, no. well, how does Pandora not get away from the RIAA trying to? Yeah, I figured that there would be a flat fee that they had to pay. Well, they, yeah. they they pay. There's a percentage off of how many songs they play. You know, they they pay uh, money, but they the artists themselves don't make a whole lot of money from that. I guess so what was be it? Their label then? I'm pretty sure their label deals with it. I I don't think unless you're a big artist like Jennifer Lopez or one of those people who can basically name their own their own their own deal. I'm pretty mm. sure it's the record label. Yeah, that is pretty interesting. Because yeah. you know, because I heard what was it with with uh, Spotify, RDO, and Pandora? It's like on ten thousands of thousands of songs that they actually make money on. It has to be played like ten, you know, so many thousands oh. of times for them to make any money. Well, th that's the uh, that's the same idea as uh, advertising on the internet. When you do things such as uh, AdSense and all that, you're getting per click. Amount, so it's the same idea that the artist is getting. How many times has that song been played? Well, by the uh, way, talk about AdSense. Yeah. We now have AdSense on our on our web on our main website at theogt.tv. Please feel free to click on it if you happen to like what it says. What did you just call our URL? Theogt.tv. <laughs> Could have sworn you said something. <laughs> No, it's it's, it's T H E O G T dot T V. Oh, thank you, thank you for clearing that up. Yeah, because I could have sworn you said something. Else. I said AdSense. Click on the AdSense. AdSense. Yes, please click on the AdSense. Help us out. We're poor. We're trying to buy all this wonderful equipment so that we can bring you all this wonderful content. So. See, there's you know, if, I was going to say if you can't see him, James is in a wheelchair. So you're going to help 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 out a guy in a wheelchair, please. Or we could put John in one. <laughs> <laughs> or, or John might end up in one. He keeps, up, keeps going the way he's going, huh? Too many crickets. Okay, well, I got one. So, 
<laughs> and I'm not quite sure how to um, how to present this one because uh, the, the all right here we go. Snopes, you know Snopes. Yeah, you know yep. Snopes. Good website, folks out there. There, you know Snopes. So if you supposedly, don't know Snopes. Well, kind of Snopes. <laughs> this may change your mind. I'm about to ring something up here that uh, is making me wonder now. So Snopes is a website where you go to find out basically if something's a, an urban legend, a myth, or is it real? Because let's face it, everything on the internet's real, right? Well, okay, no. So it's not. So Snopes. That's the uh, that's Snoopy's cousin. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, his uh, cousin once, twice removed. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Anyway, with that said, one of the things that uh, this gentleman decided to try, let's see if I have his name here, I don't know that I have his name here, but anyway, he tried to, uh, he decided to test Snopes. He wanted to see if Snopes had a political leaning, uh, because there's, you know, obviously we've got Republicans, Democrats, Independents, Liberals, liber you know, whatever, <laughs> whatever it may be. Liberals. So he... He felt that he was getting responses off of his Snopes that was leaning towards Obama. If there was something pro-Obama, it was there and it was positive. If there was something anti-Obama, they put it as, no, it's fake, it's false, it can't be. Hmm. So this, this guy went through and did this whole test. He, he did a whole test of things, and he decided to... Um, look in particular to a reading that one of the uh, Supreme Court justices, it's um, what's, it's Kagan. Uh, she's the latest female that's on the Supreme Court. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, so, the one that Obama appointed. One, the super liberal. The mm -hmm. one that Obama appointed, right? So, um... Here I come to say the day. Uh, he, did some, he did some Supreme Court testing to see if if Snopes reported the stories properly or not. And what he found out is that if she had voted in such a manner that didn't fall in line with the uh, liberal media press, Snopes would report it as being uh, false. Oh, huh. Really? Yeah. Interesting. And, and I'm he, shocked by that. He did that by going to the actual Supreme Court website. He read the particular um, judgments that she made where it's written the way it's written. That's a lot of work. He put a lot of time in this, and Snopes actually said it was a legend, that it wasn't real, when it was real and right on the U.S. Supreme Court website. So did, did wow. Snopes respond? No, they're ducking the issue. Um, now, here's, here's the other interesting thing. Wow. Apparently, you know, Snopes is run by a couple. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? Husband and wife. Mm -hmm. Well, all, everybody has always wondered where their money comes from. What, you know, what is bringing in their money so that they can keep Acorn. doing that? Well, <laughs> it, it is, uh, let's see if I can find that guy's name. It is, um, I don't think SOA. Oh, guess what? Some... I didn't print here. It was, it's that billionaire Sonoros. He, he's in, he's in uh, New York. Hmm. And uh, anyway, he apparently is a, um, a very large liberal, a big uh, supporter uh, and he has been pumping money into Snopes. It was so much for and, their credibility now. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's gone. Yeah, and um, so, okay, all of a sudden, um, yeah, it was cut off on my printout. I kind of, I think it's George Sonolo, Sonotos. Anyway. George, is it like George Soros? That may be it, but I don't know. Okay. Go, anyway, I got this. Anyway, the point, the point being here is that we... Somebody took the time to find out what direction Snopes actually went into. Were they completely unbiased? Are they biased? And after this testing, um, he found out they are definitely biased. Wow. Oh. I'm actually shocked by that. I am shocked by that, too. I, I mean, I've trusted Snopes for years, and, and usually it's mostly on <clears throat> not political stuff. Right, right. Just kind of social, like you said, urban legends. Yeah, and I, I've used them too to uh, quote, oh no, that's a fake story or, or not. And I'm going to mm -hmm. assume that much of their stuff is still true, but I'm certainly not going to believe any of their stuff when it comes to politics. Anymore. No, I'm, I'm just, just totally gone. I'm just yeah. really impressed that the they, the guy actually sat through and read all the you know Supreme Court. You know, because that's not, a lot of. I don't even do that. I'm not. If I actually had a reason. To want to find that out, I would. Mm -hmm. 
I, I don't know about you, Rob. I, yeah. You know, I, oh, yeah. I, I would actually search it out. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And if I had come across something like this, this is kind of big scandal, too. I mean, because Snopes has always been promoted as unbiased. Yeah, uh, right. Definitely. Not right. a lie. You right. can trust it. And then coming to find out that it's supporting Obama and changing their own views and, and that's a pretty big and, deal. And putting their stamp on something like that is is saying something. Yeah, I I'm gonna I'm wondering if Snopes is going to report this. I did not go to their website today to see if they're going to respond to this in any. Way, you know, I bet you if you look this up on Snopes, they say it was false. It's false. <laughs> so when did this happen? They probably would. When did this, does it give a date when the guy did that? No, unfortunately, you know, we were in a hurry to get stories today. And, and if those of you looking at our studio, we've made some changes and we've gotten some more high-end cameras and it took us quite a while to get things set up. So uh, I did not have a whole lot of time to do a bunch mm. of research. But uh, maybe take the time and go to Snopes and see if they even um, yeah, it's talk gonna about say, it. Because, you're, you're right. It's you going to say fake. Yeah. I, I would almost guarantee that they would say it's fake. Yeah. But, you know, I would actually... It's something something like this where I'm not going to get too much political stuff, but when we have so much sway going back and forth on supporting political views, I'm not surprised that something like this came out. But I would yeah. also, you know... I'm I, disappointed. I'm, I'm disappointed. Di I'm di very disappointed, too. Because, you know, I think Snopes does a, does a job that needs to be done. I, I mean, I, I and I give them a lot of credit. They have to have they have to put a ton of time in, and I, I don't know if they have a big staff now. My guess is, is that especially if they're getting money from a billionaire, that they've probably had to put on some staff, but which I totally understand. Here's my question: If they're getting millions and billions of dollars, how well, come their website is still hideous? I I don't know about Williams and billions, millions and billions, but they're making I'm some sure money. thousands. And they, um, could, they could pay somebody a couple of bucks an hour to redo their I, website. I could say the same thing about Craigslist. Yeah. I mean, I can't stand it or Reddit. <laughs> I mean, you've got a couple of sites out there that are popular. Well, Reddit? That, Reddit? <laughs> terrible folks. Well, the, well, the terrible. funniest thing about... You're getting in a fanboy's way. Uh, I, I, <laughs> I was going to say, for, for Reddit, I, I don't know about Craigslist. The ugly design actually actually works, because I, th I think that the minimalist, I, I think they could refine it, but I think because it's all about the stories. It stinks. Well, it's like Diggs. I don't like Diggs' new design. Because yeah. I just want, I just want the stories. The only thing Reddit has a hard problem with is what Reddits they have. They like all their subreddits. Yeah, that's hard to find. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but just the simplest. The, I like the simplicity of it. But it's you know, it is an ugly website, but it somehow works. Right. I guess Craigslist is the whole same. But Craig, I mean, come on. There's some really ugly sites out there that haven't changed since they started ten years ago. Yeah, but amazingly, Craigslist has put all the newspapers out of business. <laughs> Yeah, I guess so. I don't know. I... So what's uh, your second story? Well, <clears throat> my second story, I won't go into all of this whole story of what, what this is, but I will. No, I'm going to cover the good part. Okay. I'll, I'll cover the good stuff. But there's some more in here that, um, let me see how far I'm going to go. Okay. Um, okay. Ex-Colorado sheriff charged in meth for sex case. Have you guys heard this one yet? No. no. You guys haven't heard about this? This one's no. been out for about a week now. Really? <clears throat> a former Colorado lawman who was once named the nation's sheriff of the year <laughs> was charged Friday, this past Friday, a week ago, with drug and prostitution offenses after authorities said he offered methamphetamine to a man ex in exchange for sex. A man? A man. Patrick Sullivan Jr., 68, was held on $500,000 bond in an isolated cell at a jail named in his honor <laughs> in suburban Denver. <laughs> no, uh, that's ironic. don't know the county, but Sheriff Grayson said current or former law enforcement are held in uh, you know, segregated cells for their safety at the Patrick J. Sullivan Jr. detention facility. Oh, boy. <laughs> I, wonder, I wonder if anybody in there said, hey, how do you like being held in your jail? So, is, go on. I didn't mean to cut you off. Uh, if there's well, more here. Patrick but... Sullivan charged, uh, prosecutors charged Sullivan with felony distribution, possession of meth, as well as a misdemeanor charge of soliciting prostitution. Authorities say he offered methamphetamine exchange for sex for a male from a male acquaintance in a sting set up by officers with a drug task force. 
<laughs> Sullivan also is charged with attempting to influence a public servant following a September 2020 report of an old man inside a home that the caller said he wanted to leave. The incident <clears throat> report notes a man at the house reported Sullivan was getting three recovering addicts back into drugs. Sullivan told investigators that he was helping them out as part of his work with a law enforcement and state drug rehab program. Officials have no record of Sullivan working for either. So he's also uh, negated, declined doing any interviews. So is he a former or current sheriff? He's a former sheriff. He's retired. That's why he didn't know about the sting. Yeah. Oh, boy. <laughs> Isn't that sad? How bad is that? I mean, I'm assuming that this could guy, you know. And then you do you. The you, story you, you, go, goes on. on to talk about some of his heroic acts. He worked from 1984 to 2002 when he uh, retired, and he was also uh, under investigation for a drowning death of a 27 year old man who. Um, was supposedly found with drugs and date rape drugs and things like that. So he, he was already in, under investigation. Right, so he pulled a Chappaquita. But really, a guy like this, who was nationally recognized, buildings named after him, what really goes through your head to say, you know, that guy's cute. I wonder if he would, you know, have sex with me for meth you know, you know what's so sad is I'm sure that the guy probably started his career out just fine mm -hmm. and he may have served many years as sheriff just fine but what what pushes you over the edge that way i mean it sounded like he has cop he thinks that he's beyond the law well that's it that <laughs> yeah exactly that he, th he thought he was untouchable where's charlie sheen yeah you know totally i mean he you know he started getting has this named after him was this I, I think it just it was an ego thing i bet he thought you know like james says he was above the law and that nobody's going to touch a former sheriff yeah what a shame but it just baffles me. What that, a douche. That, that, you know, I mean, he's 68. You know, he'll probably lose his pension. Oh, he'll no, I guarantee time. I mean, he's lost his pension. You know, the guy, he's going to lose the rest of his life in jail. Well, I guarantee know, he's going to get at least 20, 30 years You know, years the old of line on, on law enforcement officers, it takes a crook to find a crook. And unfortunately, sometimes that's true. Yeah. Uh, you know, it, I have many, many friends in law enforcement that are excellent, but... Every now and then you run into one that oh, yeah. makes you, you know, makes I, you wonder. I always say that, you know, I treat all law enforcement with respect until they really show where they're at on it. Because, you know, you always get one of those cops that's that's just a complete jerk. Right. Right. And I have no problem being one right back if that's the way that they start out. Well, if they start out with, I will still give them respect. Don't get me wrong, right, but right, you know, right. I will, I will see how cooperative I am off of that. But th honestly, I think they have a hard job. They do. Oh, they do. They see the the horrible side of society. They don't see the good side very often. And it takes something to really stay out of that because you see it all the time. You know, you can get to the point of why try. You know? Yeah, but right. if you, but if you see you if you're busting all these people all the time for doing methamphetamine stuff, what makes you think that you're going to get away with it? Well, what makes you think that you even want to try it if you see how bad these people are on methamphetamine? Yeah, and then it even says that you took three recovering drug addicts. That's the worst one right there, I think. And yeah. started yeah. getting them back into it. Now I don't know the whole story on it. They might have been inclined to go back to it anyways, but to be somebody who obviously had some great Great exactly. record, oh, obviously. Yeah. Great jacket, something going on there, and then just to turn around and throw it away. Yeah, yeah throw the whole thing away. That's a real shame. That really is. Because he'll he'll spend at least a couple of years behind bars. Well, if not the rest you're of them. 68. You went through this. You started in '84. You retired in 2002. That's a long time. Yeah. Yeah, you know, what is that? That's uh, 18 years on the force. You know what the worst part about this is? Now they're going to have to go back and check his record. Oh, yeah, they they're, they're, they're going to go back. Arrest. Well, there's they're, the other problem. All these people yeah. that have been arrested by this gentleman, <clears throat> every attorney under the sun is going to be going back and challenging everything that he ever did. Yeah. You mm -hmm. know? And uh, he's just destroyed all this all the credibility. Good, well, he destroyed all the good that he probably did. I'm sure yeah. he did some really good things. And it's I'm shame. sure he did, too. Yeah. Well, there, there's one, in, one instance where he actually drove his car through a fence to provide cover for 
some fellow officers that are being pinned down. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, he's done some really good things, obviously. You right. Know, he put his own life in the line for people. He's done multiple things, and then he just turns it around and throws it away for Sex drugs and, and drugs. drugs. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's a shame. Oh, he's well. not a rock and roll star. He's a <laughs> former <laughs> officer. You know? It's a shame. You should have talked uh, to John Bunnell. Maybe he could get some help. Yeah. Well, I'm sure that guy might have. I don't know. So do we have anything else? No. I think that's it. I think that's I it. Know. I don't know anything else. You we sure did you pretty good today. Else? We're real close to the yeah. half hour mark. We're trying to keep these yeah. down to that. And hopefully you found this kind of uh, fun. Hey, listen, we're going to have a, a Christmas gift thing running here, hopefully in the next week or so. We're going to give away a free Android tablet. That's right. Mm. Free one. So that means you're going to need to start watching our shows, and, and you'll get some hints about what's going to come up. So hopefully yeah. sometime next week we'll, uh, we'll be able to announce that. In the meantime, for uh, James Stevens and John Charney, I'm Rob Charney. Thanks, guys. Thank See you, you soon. Hi, this is Rob Charney with Old Guy Tech TV, and I want to talk to you today about Windfall. Windfall has two outstanding offers for you to take advantage of. They have their 12-week business-only ad for just $60. That's just $5 a week. You're not going to find a better deal anywhere. Windfall has a rewards program like no other, a real windfall. Give us five and your ad is free. So refer five people or businesses and you get your ad for free. Visit Windfall on the web at www.shopthewindfall.com or call 530-621-1698. Everybody needs a windfall. Thank you, Windfall. See you soon.